take a look at, at what we have planned for the implementers showcases. Um, we have three right now for today. We're going to hear from METS, from Nepal EHR, and Partners in Health. Um, so hopefully you are all here and ready to go. Um, Christine is going to facilitate that session. I will be Solomon. Uh, so I'll hand it over to Solomon, who I think is already ready and uh, is already sharing the screen. And um, for each implementer, you have 10 minutes so that uh, in case of anybody else would like to join, there's also enough time. So without further ado, Solomon, welcome. Um, good afternoon. At least from my end, it's a, it's it's an afternoon. Um, can you hear me, Christine? Yes, I can hear you very well. Yeah. All right. We um, well. So, as indicated, we um, met. Met is an organization that is mandated to um, customize OpenMRS in Uganda and build an implementation that fits the specific needs of the Ministry of Health in Uganda. And as such, we have built a, a facility-based EMR called um, Uganda EMR. So today I am here to discuss an extension of Uganda EMR that we have called Uganda EMR Mobile. My name is Solomon Sevome, and I work as a, develop, a software developer at, at METS. So Uganda EMR is a facility-based EMR, as I mentioned earlier. And um, we are currently running in over 1,000 facilities across the country. So we are one of the implementations of, of OpenMRS, uh, just like any other implementations um, out there. And so we are basically located at every facility there is an EMR, at least for the 1,000 or so facilities that we are aware of. Um, so what we've done is we've designed a mobile app to function seamlessly with Uganda EMR. Its function is to work as an extension of Uganda EMR for people when they go into the community. And we have chosen to call it a, a light version of Uganda EMR uh, with both online and, um, and offline um, functionalities. So the purpose of this mobile app is to support clinical documentation and um, service providers at, um, at a community level for, you know, when people leave the facility and go out there in the community. Um, currently, we are supporting um, services such as um, community drug distribution points. That is where ARV clients um, go to pick their drugs, or what we call drug refills. We also have um, services for um, community client art deliveries. So for those of you that are familiar with DSDM, these are different models. In CDDPs, a client comes to a particular point and they get their medication. In CCLAD, um, there is a team lead that actually comes to the facility, picks the meds, and then delivers them to particular homesteads of, uh, of the different clients. So currently, we support both of those services in the community. Our implementation approach is as um, depicted by this image. We have uh, mobile devices, as you can see. Uh, we need a D-Link switch and also a Uganda EMR server. Now, this D-Link switch is simply there to establish a connection between, um, between the mobile device and the server. It is important to note that this connection does not necessarily have to be an internet connection. It can be a LAN, it can be any form of connection as long as the two, um, uh, the mobile device and the server can communicate. Now, in most cases, um, especially with facilities that we've worked, um, the server is basically the same Uganda EMR computer. But of course, um, the ideal situation would be that you have a server situated somewhere, you have uh, clients working somewhere, and so they are feeding data into the server. So this is our implementation approach currently, and this is how we've chosen to, to implement this solution. So our implementation approach, we are, the technology we are using is that we are running and supporting uh, all devices running Android 4.0 and above. And also we are running, um, we started this support with uh, Uganda EMR 3.10. So all facilities we believe that are running Uganda EMR 3.10 must be able to um, implement uh, these services using Uganda EMR mobile. 
uh, as of you, most of you are aware, OpenMRS has a REST uh, web API, and we've chosen to utilize that. We generally do not need um, an internet connection, any form of connection, as long as uh, the device can communicate with the server, we can easily um, have a synchronization. Um, our strategy for rolling out is that we are training um, implementing partners. Implementing partners, these are different organizations that are mandated with serving um, people in different regions. So the country has been divided into regions and we are trying to make sure that we work with them, we train them, who in turn will train um, the community health workers that provide these services. Currently, we have four sites um, implementing um, this mobile app. We have just recently rolled out, I think in February, and as I speak today, as of yesterday, we, we released out another alpha version for our colleagues to, to test and give us feedback. So in a few weeks from now, we shall be having another official release of, of the mobile app, which we shall call um, Uganda MR Mobile 2.0. So um, we have over 100 patient records that are synced in a week for high volume facilities. But of course, this is an average. So for some facilities, it is way high above. And for, for some facilities, it is, um, it is way below. Um, now, the challenges that uh, we are facing and we are trying to solve is that um, our service providers have to move with paper records. Of course, this comes with uh, its logistical challenges such as transport. And we are trying to solve that. Uh, we also have an issue with the uh, backlog uh, in data entry. So if people go out there in the community for two days, then they have to come back with paper-based records at the facility for the data entrance to enter. That creates a lot of backlog, which of course in the long run affects um, reporting. Also retrieval of historical data at the point of service. Um, you can imagine if someone is, at, um, is having a paper record and you see a client, then you need to know their current regimen. You need to know when did they start? What was their last viral load? So all of that information we have made sure those are some of the current challenges and we are trying to provide solutions to them by providing um, a mobile app. Now, the implementation challenges that we've had um, while rolling out the mobile app is that um, the MOH Minister of Health is still insisting that for every record, there must be a paper record. So you find that um, service providers have to enter data in an electronic system but also have to transcribe it on a paper record, which, which is double entry of data, but um, conversations are going on and I'm sure that uh, sooner than later, we shall have that solved where we will have harmonization. If you have an electronic medical records, then possibly you may not need the paper-based record. Then we also have an issue of uh, the absence of Android devices to, to, to support these activities. But, but of course that is being um, addressed by our colleagues and partners buying more of the devices at the facilities. We also have an issue of low levels of computer literacy among service providers. Our community health workers generally in the country are not computer survey. And therefore, sometimes it takes quite a lot of time when you're teaching and training them, sometimes they forget. And so it requires a lot of on-site mentorship. So I think those are some of the major implementation challenges we've had while for the, at least for the four sites we've worked. Uh, with while rolling this out. And what we are trying to look at in our next steps is that we need to make sure that for every facility that is running Uganda EMR, it can actually provide um, more community services on a mobile device. And one of the things that we are looking at is how do we scale up from the four facilities, of course, in a first manner from the four facilities to reach out to, to the entire country. We also hope that um, we will extend more Uganda MR functionality because Uganda MR has a lot of functionalities. Now, what we want is to make sure that we extend the functionalities of Uganda EMR into Uganda EMR mobile. Some of these services include uh, back to care services, um, healthy testing um, and counseling services and immunization. Generally, all services that are offered in the community, in the healthy sector, we want, the goal is to make sure that we, we can capture that data 
even when people are not seated in front of a computer. Um, we also want to improve on data synchronization. Currently, the process of data synchronization is that I go to a facility, uh, establish a connection to, to a facility based EMR, and then after that, um, I will have data. But now we have cases of someone has gone into the community and they need to get access to a facility based record. Our intention is that we will have a web resource that will support um, querying of this facility database um, from any particular location. Of course, there are some technicalities that we have to navigate, but that is where we, we expect um, and intend to go eventually when we finish the, the functionality and we've done the rollout to, to all of our facilities. That is so far the journey that, um, that we've, we've walked as, um, as Uganda EMR and um, hopefully I haven't um, intervened on, on the time allocated. But so far briefly, that is what I can talk about when it comes to the work so far done by METS um, in Uganda EMR mobile um, in connection with uh, Uganda EMR, the major system that we are basically extending. Thank you so much. Christine. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Solomon. Uh, you were just right on time. Um, if uh, anyone, please, if you have questions, please uh, add, uh, in, uh, in, indicate them on the chat window. I'm very sure uh, Solomon will be happy together with teammates to answer any of the questions that you may have on the presentation he has just done. Um, then further ado, we'll then next have uh, Nepal EHR, which will be, the presentation will be done by Laxman. You can uh, start setting up. Um, yeah. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, Christine. Yes, thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. Um, Solomon, if you could uh, stop sharing your screen so that we can release it for Laxman. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Solomon, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, we can see your screen. Uh, so uh, I'm very happy to talk about uh, Nepal ESR uh, in this uh, community meeting. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, uh, OpenMRS community and everyone uh, in this uh, meeting. Uh, so my name is Lakshman Manandar. I'm from Nepal, uh, working as an engineering manager. Uh, so uh, talking about uh, Nepal EHR, it's a customization or a distribution on the top of Bambi, and we help uh, customize uh, the requirements and develop uh, the features as per the requirement of uh, our country, Nepal. So as we know that Bambi, it's uh, already an integrated product of OpenMRS, OpenEDIS, uh, and OpenERP or UDU uh, recently. And it consists of the uh, different features uh, for the clinical, uh, for lab, and for stock management. And uh, from the Nepal user team, we have uh, developed the integration with uh, EDITAS2. And we have developed the uh, IPD module as well as uh, we have also integrated uh, with insurance uh, system that is open MS. So here's an uh, overall uh, picture for the uh, integrated Nepal EHR ecosystem. So we have uh, for the facility-based uh, system, we are using BAMNI and it's a customized version. And for the community, we are using Comcare and BAMNI Connect uh, for the community healthcare. For reporting insurance, um, for the national level uh, reporting, we are using DHS2. And for the insurance, uh, we are uh, integrated uh, with OpenMS system. And uh, we are looking forward for the SSR implementation as well. Uh, so, uh, for the Nepal EHR timeline, uh, we started from uh, 2015. First implementation was in the remote Nepal, uh, Boil Panda Hospital. And then after we went for Sari Kot Hospital as a number two. And uh, going forward, we implemented in New Akut Hospital, then after Chawapati Hospital. And in the recent uh, 2020, at the end of 2020, we uh, implemented in other uh, 
hospitals like um, people Gurkha hospital we are moving for the ward level implementation in Chaurpati. Uh, all these locations are from the remote nepal and recently as a uh, yesterday's uh, presentation dr Bikas Tepude has also mentioned uh, regarding the mou between the nhn and the government we are implementing uh, for seven plus hospitals more uh, in this uh, current year and that will be from the Karnali province. So we'll be looking after the provincial uh, implementation as well. So what we are currently working on, as uh, briefly mentioned in previous slides, we are scaling up for the implementation uh, for the province level implementations uh, that will be around uh, seven plus hospitals. Uh, so I think that will be, that will count to maybe around uh, 14 or 15 plus hospitals uh, which have Nepali HR, uh, and we are looking forward for more implementations this year. And uh, we are certainly going for insurance integration into the production because uh, as till now, we are just only tested the integration in the testing environment and uh, will be launched into production after, after uh, at the end of this month, I guess, uh, as per um, provided information from the government, as we'll be integrated, we, integrating with the government uh, health insurance system. Uh, we have we are working for uh, data to integration as well. Uh, till now, we are sending just aggregated data for the monthly reporting, uh, and now we are going to enhance uh, data to integration uh, for the EVARS reporting. That is for the emergency reporting as well. Um, so next one, we will be working for SSR, that is a shared health record, that so that um, the hospitals uh, within the uh, same province can interoperate uh, the records of the same patient. Uh, I'll talk more in details uh, in the coming slides. So development achievements I'm looking forward. Uh, what we have achieved as a uh, Nepal HR community and uh, development, development and implementers team. So uh, as per our experience, experiences uh, from the last five years, uh, there were some issues uh, like uh, handling the concepts uh, and the observation templates and also using the inform uh, diagnosis. So now we have uh, come to the point where we can manage the uniform database that is like a uniform observation templates and uh, using ICD-10 diagnosis uh, all in one same database and so that for every new implementation, it will be easy for us to manage those concepts. So uh, Nepal HR plus DHS2 is also the, one of the greatest achievements. Uh, and this is already in production uh, from the past three years, I guess. Uh, for now. And also we are doing enhancements uh, for the integration. You can see the reports in the DHS2 itself. So the Nepal HS2 plus DHS2, uh, you can visualize and data for the data monitoring and surveillance for the overall uh, national implementation. So next one is the Nepal HR plus Open uh, We have successfully integrated with Open as well. Um, for this, we are using the FIRE as a protocol. And for this, we have also tested with the interoperability layer, uh, Open HIM, using Open HIM. And I think uh, this one initiates our uh, on HI architecture here in Nepal. And uh, so that one, uh, so after integrating open image, so we can claim insurance. Uh, we can check for the eligi eligibility of the patient from the EHR itself. And uh, by using this, uh, both uh, the EHR users and the patients can get uh, benefits. Uh, patients can, uh, they can check the eligibility from the EHR systems. And, they can uh, check the balances from the HR system itself, where, wherever they go, where there is a Nepal HR systems. So uh, looking forward, uh, next big thing for the Nepali HR, uh, it's uh, we are trying to, actually we are doing research for now, and we are continuing uh, with the open HI community and community. And uh, yes, we are looking forward for SSR and interoperability. So like, uh, as we are, so uh, this one is a Karnali province of Nepal, and uh, we have done MOU for seven plus more hospitals in the Karnali region. And it's, uh, it's like um, uh, all the hospitals from the province, provincial level. And then after we are conceptualizing uh, this shared health record, 
so that every data patient data can be synced into shared health record. And if uh, whenever the patient moves from uh, refers from one hospital to another, the patient data can be synced from one EHR to another EHR. So this one is a thing we are going to we are planning to achieve. And after doing a proof of concept for one province, we are um, we are more into discussion with the. Um, country government for scaling it to the national level as well, and so thus pushing uh, Nepal for the national level, national level implementation. <laughs> the main uh, objective of this SSR uh, is for the sharing data to improve healthcare outcomes. So, talking about the pain points, um, for now, what we are facing is like a um, we lack some kind of motivation to the users, clinicians, like uh, maybe um, it would be very much helpful if we can have a um, clinical decent support system, maybe in the open M as a open MRS module. And other thing is referrals from one hospital to another. We need to digitally sync uh, the records. Uh, I guess uh, the SSR will be important part for this. So the problems we are trying to solve uh, is uh, we are looking for the digital healthcare, integrated digital healthcare system in the province level. And uh, we are trying to manage the referrals from another hospital, one hospital to another using a SSR. Also, we are um, trying to implement uh, interoperability between uh, various health systems like insulin system, digestive system, and, and plus other systems, uh, maybe PFM. Uh, and mobile application, we are also have a roadmap to develop a mobile application for community healthcare. Uh, yeah, that's all. That's all from my side. Hope I finished uh, within the allocated time. Uh, back to you, Christine. Um, thank you so much, uh, Lakshman. Yes, you have, and you even have like uh, forty-three minutes, uh, uh, forty-three seconds to go. Um, if there's any one quick question from anyone. Okay. If uh, anyone has a question, please use the, the chat, uh, the chat uh, to just go ahead and ask your question there. I'm sure uh, Lakshman will be able to respond. Next up, we'll have partners in health and uh, Ellen will be doing the presentation together with the team. So Ellen, over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, hope you can hear me. So um, my name is Ellen from Partners in Health. I'm in the US. Um, nice that we can get together under these uh, online situations. Um, Usually acknowledgements go at the end, but I wanted to take this opportunity to say that I know that it's been a challenging year for many of us um, with COVID, with family, with travel. And I know there's been, um, you know, political situations certainly in places like that we work like Haiti or also other outbreaks like uh, an Ebola outbreak in Guinea. Um, so, uh, I wanted to, uh, acknowledge that and thank our colleagues for going above and beyond under these circumstances this past year. So in the past, uh, if you've had a chance to hear some of our presentations, we've covered a lot of the, um, a lot of things about the partners in health EMR system. Um, so I'm just going to cover some brief updates of what we've been working on since the last showcase, which was six months ago. But for those of you who are new to this, just to say that PAH EMR is built on uh, OpenMRS 2.3.3. It's the reference applications with some slight differences. Um, all our code is on GitHub. Everything's free and open. Anybody's welcome to, to our code. Um, PIHEMR is currently used and has been used since 2013 in Haiti 
and then followed soon after in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Mexico. Um, many health centers where, and hospitals where Partners in Health works, and a large range of facilities from tertiary teaching hospitals to small health centers, um, for instance, in Liberia. Um, and the, we're currently working on a, rolling this out also to Peru, and hopefully that'll happen in the next months. So um, this is some of what we've been doing, uh, a big portion of what we've been doing, certainly for the last six months, but really goes back much longer than that. So we, um, we even before I ever arrived at Partners in Health, um, have been providing HIV care in Haiti, one of the first uh, international uses of ARVs and care and treatment. And I don't like to get too far away, even though we're talking about technology, I like to bring it back to like why we're using the technology. And um, these are three patients who started care in 1999 and 2000, um, getting ARTs, being seen in our hospitals and clinics, um, and you can see um, the effects of good care and treatment. Um, so the top picture is when they first came in to our clinics quite, quite ill. And then the bottom picture is of three of those people. Um, the man in the middle is the man on the top left uh, in the photograph. And the woman in the pink shirt is the one who's lying in bed. Um, and uh, the bottom photo is from 2014. So what we're doing now for the EMR is we're, um, we started uh, an EMR in uh, 2001 in Haiti with records for patients like these patients here. And um, we're migrating those records now to open MRS. So here it is 20 years later um, and migrating data from 40,000 patients over the past 20 years to open MRS. This is the last EMR system that PIH supports um, that hasn't been on open MRS. And this is one of the reasons why we appreciate the community. We appreciate open MRS and Partners in Health isn't going to be writing a new EMR on our own without um, the support of a great community like we have here. Um, so the things that we're migrating over in, in addition to the data are comparable forms, uh, intake follow-up dispensing, also based on the care that we provide, multi-month dispensing um, medication forms, um, we're also supporting multi versions of those forms since um, the paper forms and what we've collected over those past 20 years has changed. So we put in effort to not lose the data that we've been collecting for that long. Uh, this system will be certainly used for PEPFAR reporting as it is now. Um, we're building in ETL and data warehousing capabilities and user acceptance testing is, has been done. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a little more ongoing work, but we're hoping to migrate in the next months, make the switch. In addition to that, we built in some uh, much more comprehensive OBGYN capabilities, um, partners in health, um, health centers and associated health centers in our 10 countries where we work around the world have had a, a, a million women's health checkups around the world. And we want to use the EMR to capture at least some of that data. Um, things like prenatal, postpartum, family planning, OBGYN. Uh, in some cases in Haiti, we're collecting a very small subset of information and we want to replace 
um, a combination of paper forms and these short forms with longer, more comprehensive information so that they can enter things just once in the EMR. Um, same thing using ETL, Power BI for KPIs. Um, maybe you had a chance to hear Debbie talk, uh, do her lightning talk yesterday. And that describes some of the path and process to get from EMR in terms of um, KPIs. Um, and we're doing training deploying this month and next. Um, and the system should go live at a large hospital in Haiti, um, yeah, certainly in early May. Uh, one of the features that we've added both for the OBGYN and for HIV, but for certainly for the community is that um, Mike Seaton added uh, drug order tags to the HTML form. This is documented in the reference guide. Um, so it's a great way to be able to capture it in a standard way on a form, uh, on an HTML form. Uh, other things that are ongoing, there's certainly work going on in our other, um, other projects in Liberia, where they're rolling out to um, JJ Dawson Hospital um, Maternal Health. And in the past few months, we've gone live with NCDs and uh, mental health at JJ Dawson. Also ongoing in Sierra Leone uh, this month, hopefully they're going to go live at Ko Koidu Government Hospital uh, with the EMR. And this is um, down the road from a health center that we have supported for the past five years, but now it'll be rolled out to a hospital. Um, other things we've been doing, little things like updating our style, which is great. We um, haven't had a chance to do this, but uh, it, it's not a big lift. And I would encourage people to, to tackle this on your own systems. So some of our plans for now uh, and some things we've already started are an Ubuntu 2004 upgrade for our software, not only our software, but the you know, 50 or more servers that are out there um, that are running the PIHEMR. Um, also prescribing and dispensing integration. We, in the past, we've captured dispensing, but we really need to connect those up and have real orders going on in the system. We're also adding PMTCT for Haiti um, and additional health facilities beyond that large teaching hospital um, uh, for OBGYN and also uh, additional rollout of EMR to other sites for NCDs. Uh, Piat Peru EMR and additional data warehousing both in Malawi and Mexico. Pain points. So our pain points um, certainly are things that were brought up in the last two presentations, which were great, thanks to Solomon and Luxman, um, which is this idea of connectivity and offline. Um, connectivity being an issue when we don't have internet um, and uh, the idea that we, a lot of our users want offline capabilities because they rely on the EMR being uh, available at point of care. So um, we still uh, suffer from this pain point. And because of this, it's, been a challenge of where to have servers, whether or not they should be either cloud-based or local, and if they are, how they would communicate. So one example of this is that uh, our women's health module is installed on local server, but our HIV system will be in the cloud to replace a cloud-based EMR which would have all the HIV information for all the places we work in Haiti. 
So how do we go about sharing records between those systems for women who are both getting care um, for prenatal visits and at the same time um, we're able to report their uh, information to PEPFAR for um, HIV care for HIV positive pregnant women. Um, and also this idea of being able to integrate orders and results both for medications and labs. So these are areas that we're actively uh, collaborating with others in the community. Uh, certainly OCL for OpenMRS, which we hope to use in the near future. Uh, condition lists, which we have uh, unfortunately not been able to roll out yet because um, despite a lot of effort, we're probably 99% there. We haven't had a chance to fully test and troubleshoot um, that condition list already. Um, all the great work that we heard about yesterday with OpenMRS 3.0 um, and also OVRI are great, but they're not here today. And we have uses, the, these systems are live. So um, we're certainly watching and collaborating on those new systems and wish that all this was all available today. Um, and one of the areas that has come up uh, recently is that there's no standard way in the REF app for vaccinations. We have our own way of doing it in the PIHEMR, but it's not available to the community. So, so that's it. Thanks very much. And if you have questions, please put them online, reach out. Um, I'm sharing information from colleagues all around the world. Thanks to all of them. Bye-bye.